welcome. Here we are, another week has passed and another episode of the Aussie Lawn is about to unravel. Today I thought we'd head out and have a look at this front lawn. It's uh, been a few weeks since we've been out here and we've just finished our third frost of the season this morning. Uh, the temperatures got down to freezing around about midnight and continued to about 7 o'clock this morning. Um, so I thought it's probably a good time. We're just going to give this front lawn today a little bit of a, uh, a trim up. I did actually yesterday... Um, I went over it yesterday with the mower, but I wasn't overly happy. I sort of raced through it at the end of the day and I, I wasn't happy with the cut. So I think what I might do first up is just run over it again, just to tidy things up. Um, it was actually a little bit sort of spongy. And I think what's happened is, I think the PGR application I put on a few months ago has actually now started to wear off and you get that little surge of growth after that happens. So I reckon because I've actually, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Because I have a moment for a few weeks, I think it, it sort of it didn't scalp in areas but it just it didn't cut nicely so gonna run over it quickly again with the uh, with the real mower and then uh, gonna give it a hit now I was, I was tossing up what fertilizer to, to chuck on this obviously we're, we're gonna be talking a liquid fertilizer for this time of year because the soil temperatures are, are dropping the the air temperatures dropping and uh, granules aren't going to give us any sort of real real benefit so uh, I think what we might do, we might actually run with the with the plant doctor stuff. Um, I did have some uh, more commercial synthetic product there, but that will require some irrigation straight after, and and um, we are still in some sort of water restrictions, so it's past the time of day that I can put water on straight after it. So I think for the purpose of this, uh, we'll continue with our Activate Mate, our uh, Seaweed Secrets, and they have also sent me some... Uh, humic acid, volvic acid, I've got to check which one it was. So we might chuck that down as well and we'll finish off with uh, some iron application just to strengthen um, strengthen things up or basically gonna make that, that, that turf grass a little bit warmer and uh, help it resist the best it can from any, any frost. But let's have a little look across this lawn and see how it's running. It's a bit dewy at the moment, but we'll have a look before we cut it and then we'll have a look again after we cut it. And I'll just post a little bit of footage up in the corner there of the cut from yesterday afternoon and why I sort of wasn't happy with how it came up. Okay, so considering we're now in early June and into winter, you've, this, this cooch, after its third frost, is still holding on really, really well. So this is Santorana cooch, in case you're only new to the channel. And it's cut, oh, geez, I can't think now. I think it's cut about seven, seven or eight millimeters or something like that, I'd have to check. I'm not, I'm not too, I'm not too big on getting carried away with heights on this front lawn. I keep that for that putting green at the back. Uh, but there's just little areas that it, it sort of scalped, but it, it sort of didn't scalp. Um, so little bits like this here. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll give it a bit of a hit up today with, uh, with that liquid furt, a bit of iron as well. And then uh, we've got these bits here near the street. And again, tiny bit of scalping from the edge of the pathway there from the uh, from the cylinder mower. So yeah, just got a little bit thatchy uh, in its growth rather than leaf growth. So I'd say it had a little bit of a spurt and I'd say that that PGR has now, has now finished. Right, so this, uh, this is the machine that I used to cut this front lawn. It's the uh, Rover 45. So basically it is actually the Scott Bonner painted a different color in go fast red so when rover bought out scott bonner eventually over the years they went to the rover red color their own brand color from the uh, original green i've got a few different reels actually tucked away i've got a couple of six blade reels this is still a six blade that's in here now i've got the 10 blade and a heavy duty eight blade uh, so this one's just about at the end of its uh not end of its life but ready for a sharpen so i'll send that off uh this winter and swap out so we might do a video on swapping out the uh, cylinders too if you've got one of these machines um i wanted to also talk about uh oh, sorry about that shadow there i just want to actually also talk about um if you've got one of these machines just a few things i, I sort of see on various sites that people do and um uh, probably not really necessary and one of those is running these things at full noise you just don't need to it's not a rotary mower so it's not cutting the blade, it's not cutting the grass uh, from the velocity of the, the motor like a like a rotary mower does. 
So using the scissor action of the reel. So I only ever run this thing at half noise. So half throttle is all you need. And the other thing is, when you, uh, I've seen some people drop this clutch, be kind, just uh, let it out slowly. Um, the if you've got a manual car and you're at the traffic lights you don't leave it at full noise and drop the clutch everywhere you go you sort of feather a little bit just be a bit kind let him out slowly it's going to uh, give you a bit more longevity and be kinder on the machine um, the other thing is when you're operating these you don't need to squeeze them in all the way these are designed that you can just squeeze in the uh, the let's call it the uh, the clutch engagement or the drive engagement that's the word drive engagement you only need to um, squeeze this as much as the speed you want to walk so these clutches are designed to slip like that and I bought this machine new back in 1995 and it's still running the original original corks which is the sort of the clutch mechanism so I can vouch firsthand that uh, you're not going to do any damage to it anyway let's uh, kick it in the guts and uh, run over this yard Okay, so that's come up a lot better than it has than than yesterday's cut. Um, you see, you still see a little bit of sorry, you still see a little bit of scalping uh, through here, uh, but it's not. It, I don't know if you call it scalping. Really, probably wind the height up a tiny little bit if I wanted to, but um, yeah, let's just scroll across here and check it out. So pretty, pretty happy with how it's coming up. But we'll get that uh, third on there now. Bit of a uh, Whoopsie from the mower there, it dropped a bit of grass. I pulled up for a bit and had a bit of a yarn to the neighbours and yeah, left a bit of a mess there. I'll sweep that up, that won't be any issues. But uh, yeah, look, pretty much it's, um, it's looking pretty good. Okay, so what we're going to put down is we're going to use the uh, Quantum H, which is the humic acid. So that was the, that was the uh, one before that I was talking about before that uh, plant doctors have just provided. Um, it will do things more so for the soil. So it's going to add uh, carbon, organic materials. Uh, it's going to help feed the microbes in the soil and just generally improve soil structure. So we're going to chuck that down here today. We're going to mix it up with the good old seaweed secrets, which is your tonic, and our activate mate, which is our liquid, uh, a liquid fertilizer inoculant. So we'll chuck it out with this um, solo sprayer here. Uh, boom, spray it out, and then this afternoon I'm going to come back and give it a a little uh, touch up with the iron as well. Um, while I'm doing this, I'll do this in a time lapse and then I've actually gone back through some old TAFE notes of mine and um, what I've done is I've been able to uh, just put together a little simple NPK uh, situation. What is NPK? Benefits, uh, deficiency. So I'm just going to go through that on a voiceover. Um, so it'll just give you a bit of an idea of uh, the elements and what they do. So, all right, let's crack on. Let's get this out. Okay, so while I'm just mixing up some chemical there, uh, we're getting that Plant Doctor products all uh, mixed up, ready to apply thought and sprayed out. I thought I'll just take this opportunity to just have a little yarn about NPK. And I just thought we'd touch on the real basic stuff. We don't need to go into a great deal of, of depth because I don't think there's a great deal of benefit to that. Uh, I think if we just keep it simple uh, and give you some basic things to keep an eye out for, uh, I think that'll do a lot to help you recognize potential problems in your own lawn. So let's kick off with nitrogen, which is the N out of the P and the K. So what it's going to do, it's going to promote the color in the vegetative growth. So they're your leaves. Vegetative growth are in, in the turf sense are your leaves. So if nitrogen is in short supply, 
you're going to get things like poor leaf color and also uh, poor root development. However, on the other hand, if you overdo the nitrogen, uh, you're going to have things like the plants going, to, the grass plant's going to be over succulent. It's going to be soft. It's going to be more susceptible to pest and disease attack. Look, to be honest, I've not actually ever seen firsthand someone over apply nitrogen, but obviously it's something that can happen. Um, but more often than not, it's going to lead to be a deficiency from my experience. Okay, so how are you going to tell if you've got that deficiency? You're going to be looking for things like light green or yellow green color. The leaf dieback is going to start from the tip of the leaf with the older leaf blades being most affected. Okay, so some examples of conditions that are going to cause a likely deficiency. Sandy soils, high rainfall, low organic matter within the soil and continuous removal of top growth. So that would be things like low mowing. So when you think about a golf green, for example, you've got a very sandy uh, construction that's made out of a very sandy, porous sort of material because it's obviously getting frequently watered. So that's gonna also mirror your high rainfall. You've got a sandy soil and you're continuously low mowing. So nitrogen is gonna be something you're gonna keep an eye on uh, in a very short cut to a situation with sandy soil and lots of irrigation or rainfall. Okay, let's have a look at phosphorus. Phosphorus stimulates a rapid establishment of newly sown turf. It induces root development and in general will increase the strength and wear qualities of the turf. Some of the deficiencies, uh, look, it may lead to stunted root development. That's one of the main ones um, because obviously phosphorus is essentially all about the root development. So strong, healthy roots are going to give you a strong, healthy plant. So that's how that sort of ties in together. Okay, things to look for. If you have potentially a phosphorus deficiency, uh, you're going to see things like a dull blue green color tending purplish in cooler weather, uh, thin, slow growing turf with seedlings more likely to be deficient than that of mature turf. Uh, conditions that are likely to cause a deficiency, again, highly leached soils, organic soils, uh, cold soils. So this time of year, this winter time of year uh, and very acidic soils. So that really shouldn't be too much of a problem with a healthy turf lawn, your soil shouldn't be overly acidic, but it's something to keep an eye out for if things aren't growing quite as they should. Okay, let's cross now to potassium, and that's the K element in these three macronutrients. And people often say, well, why is it K? Why is it K when it starts with P? Well, that's actually because the chemical symbol comes from the Latin name callium. So that's where the K comes from, K for callium. Potassium plays a good role in winter survival of turf grass by building its resistance to disease and adverse conditions. Now, look, that's why in winter you see a lot of people start to talk about, you know, potassium fertilizers and throwing that down for the vigor and the structure and the cell walls and all these sorts of things. So um, this, this, this macro element starts to, you know, have a lot of benefit, especially in this time of year, all year round, but this time of year it becomes more of a favor because you're not really wanting to push growth. You're just wanting to strengthen what's there. Um... Now, other things to consider. It will help, obviously, uh, resist the disease, which we discussed, but deficiencies that you're going to look for, commonly developing from, again, acidic, sandy soils, uh, or where the top growth removal is heavier and continuous. So once again, talking about uh, sandy soils, um, and low regular mowing. So all the things that are stressing the plant out basically because we're asking this plant to do things uh, that it's not really sort of, I guess, built to do. So all this really, really short cutting is, is great and that's what we all chase or a lot of us chase in a home lawn. But as far as uh, the plant's actual structure, it doesn't really like it and it does better left longer. But obviously with the right care and maintenance, we can have these things shorter. So that's why we've got to look at these deficiencies. So... Um, Keep an eye on that sort of stuff. NPK, they're your three macronutrients. They're all going to be complemented by the plant doctor range. You've got the, the seaweed secrets and you've got the um, activate mate there and um, those sorts of things. So, look, let's leave it there. Uh, that gives you a bit of an idea of the, uh, the three big ones and hopefully it helps you understand them a bit better. Right, so later on this afternoon I'll come back and I'm just going to run over this again with some uh, liquid iron. Uh, it's going to give this stuff a chance to uh, 
do its thing on the leaf. Then later on this afternoon, I'll hit it with the iron. Uh, and then tomorrow morning, I'll just give this a very quick syringe cycle. Basically, that plant doctor stuff. We're going to leave it on the leaf like it is now, add the iron to it, and then in the morning, and just rinse it off and let it work on the top of the soil level. Uh, that's what the plant doctor is good for, and just washes that iron off the leaf after the uh, after the night of uh, of it doing its thing. Uh, Anyway, look, I hope there was enough time in that time lapse for me to talk a little bit about the NPK. Um, and I hope you got something out of this video. Uh, I've got a Facebook page, so jump across to the Aussie Lawn on Facebook if you, if you want to ask any questions or anything like that. It's easier to sort of talk to you guys through there. Um, and it can be more personal too if you want to share some photos or things like that. That'd be fantastic. Anyway, look, um, we will see you next time here on the Aussie Lawn.